Hello, welcome back to Reventer in Sports, and this is video three of three. We might do a few more on the Franken bike. And this was a video where I took a 11-speed um, Durace-equipped bike, mechanical disc, and I wanted to convert it to a 12-speed mechanical disc bike and so what I did was I left the left hand shifter which is Durace I left that alone and left the front derailleur alone now by the way this is a 9000 front derailleur I like them better than the 9100 derailleurs uh, the 9100s, they come with this, this little square pod here, and it's got a, a screw there so you can give tension onto the cable before, um, or, you know, to, to dial in the derailleur. I don't like that. I, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't really see that that was an improvement from this derailleur. They took away the long lever arm and um, I don't know for some reason I just like this one better it's so much easier to adjust and I just have an inline adjuster right here for the front derailleur to give my cable tension all right so anyway so I left the left shifter and the front derailleur and then I also left the Durace uh, front brake caliper then what I did was I put a 105 shifter and a 105 rear derailleur and a Durace 11 to 34 cassette. Now, uh, oh, and a 12 speed chain and a 12 speed crank set. Apologize for almost forgetting that. So basically, you know, the drivetrain is all 12 speed now, except for the front derailleur. Now there is some chain line questions that I guess some folks might have. I don't, I didn't have any problems dialing in the front derailleur, none whatsoever on the 12 speed crank set and the 12 speed chain, none whatsoever. I still get all four positions, so I get top, top trim, low and low trim, which are the four positions of the front derailleur. Everything just works just fine. Um, you know, if there's any extreme angles on the chain, you do the trim and there's no more rubbing on the front derailleur. I also left the rear uh, Durace caliper. Now, you know, I had a question about, well, will the you know, new derailleurs that are supposed to be servo uh, with the 10% more pad clearance, all that. And, uh, you know, apparently there's supposed to be some, some type of modulation improvement to it where it comes on a little easier, but then uh, the braking power comes on a little easier and then it comes on full uh, the more you squeeze the brake lever. I really notice a difference between my front Durace lever with the Durace caliper or this uh, front um, or this shifter. Obviously, one thing is left out of the servo system, which is the rear caliper, but I just didn't notice any difference. By the way, just so everyone knows, because um, there's always there's always one, but I sometimes there's more than one I am NOT a fan of disc brakes and so the reason I built this bike and did this is as an experiment it's an experiment for you it's an experiment for me I am a curious fellow anyone who follows the channel knows that I will say that often I like to experiment with stuff just like I like to experiment with my body and my fueling which by the way there's a, a video coming out soon about uh, an interaction I had with a customer just recently. So I did this as an experiment. Could I create this 
bike to a 12 speed mechanical bike. Now the big thing for me is I do not want DI2. I've had DI2 Durace level twice. I had it as the 7970 which was the original 10 speed system and I moved it around from bike to bike. I had it for about eight years and then eventually it was the only bike in my inventory in my quiver that was 10 speed so I ended up selling that group set. Then I had 11 speed Durace uh, DI2 and loved it. It feels great. It shifts fantastic. But it just, it's just too much complications for a bike. It's just not necessary. I'm a mechanic. If I need to do an adjustment to a, a derailleur, I know that all I have to do is turn this little guy here and make an adjustment. If I'm on the fly or if I'm in my bike shop, then I turn this guy, right? By the way, um, you know, I just, I just think mechanical systems are just so simple. They're easy. And this is a contradiction here. You have mechanical shifting, but then you have hydraulic brakes, which of course then adds complications to a bike, which is why I love my rim brake bikes. They are simple. They're easy. All the cables are external. See this internal stuff? This becomes a nightmare when you have to get down and around this bottom bracket and then up through this chainstay and make that turn. So you have to always be playing around with it. By the way, there's, a, there's quite a bit of mud on this bike because um, one of the rides I went on... Oh, okay, let's talk about that. So on Friday, on Friday late evening, I built this. On Saturday morning, I went out and did a 200K, so 125 miles. Uh, it is one of the flattest rides that I can do here with, with distance uh, to avoid any of the real hills, mountains that we have here. And I just went from where I live in San Diego, San Marcos to be more specific, up to Newport Beach. And it's along the coast and it's along the freeway as well. And it's fairly flat. Anyway, so 200 mile, I'm sorry, 200K, 125 miles with 5,000 feet of climbing, whatever that converts over to in, um, in uh, meters, I think it's like 1,400 or so. Anyway, very flat ride. But the point is, I've already ridden this bike twice that day for 200K and then so that was Saturday and today is the day after Christmas or so Boxing Day for the folks up in Canada. I rode the bike yesterday on Christmas Day for another 65 miles, 5,000 feet and it was, what is that, 105k. So I've, I've already ridden 300k on this bike since putting on the shifter, derailleur, crankset, uh, chain and cassette. And I did a video too with Jess um, looking at the shifters because another silly comment I got, oh, well, the shapes are going to be different. Everything's going to be, you can't, you know, look, no one can really tell the difference between these two shifters. They look and feel almost identical. They literally feel identical. By the way, the shifting performance of this 105 shifter, now I put the polymer coated cable so that the shifter, uh, in case there was some lag or whatever, running through the frame, going all the way out, you know, like I said, I don't like internal cable routing, but uh, it shifts great. I mean, you, I really couldn't tell the difference between a 105 and a Durace shifter. Additionally, I was also concerned about the paint finishes or the coatings on the 105 rear derailleur and the Durace level crankset finish. And honestly, since they're so far apart on the bike, you can't really tell. It just looks fine. So aesthetically, it's fine. Functionally, it is fine. Uh, this, 
This is a, uh, a, a hybrid or a Franken bike that I think anyone can do if they do not want 12 speed DI2. So just a recap for other folks, Durace level is only uh, DI2, Ultegra level is only DI2, 105 is DI2 and uh, <coughs> mechanical, but only disc, right? So this, this, this is the thing. If you're a rim brake person, your options are very limited. I think SRAM is still doing their red and their force in rim brake, 12-speed ac uh, access. But, you know, who, who rides SRAM, honestly? But, uh, yeah, so with Shimano, those are your options. Now, personally, um, you know, not being a fan of disc, not being a fan of carbon bikes, carbon wheels, some of you are like, oh, my God, look at the bike he just built. He's such a hypocrite. Like I said, I like to experiment, right? So for me, all of this was just one big experiment. I also mentioned that I probably will set this up as a, or not set this up, but move this group over to a, um, a steel frame at some point. Just need to decide which one of the Richie steel frames I'm going to move it over to. But... Um, but yeah, so I'll do a few more miles on this bike, break it down. Oh, one of the things, I, actually, completely off topic of the uh, mechanical work I did. So I ride these 28 Continental STR, so tubeless tires, on my Ritchie Logic steel bike, rim brake bike. And I've always said that the reason... I don't like disc brake bikes or one of the reasons is you have to reinforce you have to reinforce the fork to put a brake caliper there and then you have to reinforce the chainstay to put a brake caliper there and you know there's just such uneven forces applied to the frame that they then have to stiffen the whole thing anyway right you can't just have one fork leg that's stiffer than the other so it just makes everything, and through axles as well, it just makes everything harsher because stiff and stiffer isn't always better. Unfortunately, the cycling industry, the marketing, the e-magazines, the YouTube channels have made people believe that stiffer is always better. 10% stiffer than last model or whatever that is not always better so let's get back to this so 28 tires I ride them at 70 psi on my uh, rim brake bike my steel rim brake bike I can't ride 70 psi on this bike it, it just it is so harsh every time I hit a pothole or a crack or anything it is absolutely bone rattling <laughs> if that's an expression it just so I'm down to 65 yesterday so I did 70 on, 70 psi on on Saturday then I did 65 on Monday Christmas Day I think I'm gonna have to go down to 60 psi it is just so harsh compared to my steel bike same tires I can't ride the same pressure so anyway, that's a, that's a bonus round for you. And the thing is, I've explained this and, and made mention to this many, many times in other videos, but I'll do it again here just because I think it's appropriate when I talk about why I do not like disc brake bikes or even, you know, um, race bike setups. So I've given... I've given the, the, the moniker to those race bikes, the 10% stiffer, 10% stiffer, 10% stiffer. I call them four hour bikes. And people look at me kind of weird and they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, look, if you watch the World Tour teams, they are riding a 100 mile event, a 100 mile stage in about four hours. Their average speed is about 40K 
and sometimes much faster depending on how much climbing they have. They may be slower or faster, but a flatter stage, you know, sub four hours. And those bikes that you're going out and buying every day are not made for you. I have another expression. I call it, you know, my, my, my perfect customer is the fat 50 ball guy, you know, or, or 60 plus guy. I don't want, um, I should say, yeah, I don't want someone who is 60 plus riding a full on race bike because it's just not comfortable for them. So, yeah, so when you look at the concept of a four hour bike, it's a race bike that was made for the pros who are in their 20 somethings and the bike is overly stiff, overly rigid and just not pleasurable to ride. So what do they do? Well, because it's disc now we can increase tire capacity. Well, you're increasing tire capacity because the frame is so stiff, it's not enjoyable to ride. And so you have to have bigger volume tires in there. So now 28s, 30s, 32s are commonplace on a disc brake bike. All right, well, that's all for today. Please like and subscribe. I'll probably have some more videos on this bike. I'll also uh, entertain your questions. Be kind. Don't be petty. Be kind. And I will, and I will address your questions and your concerns. Okay. That is all for today. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you up the road.